Hello everybody and today I'm going to do palette knife painting with oils which is my favourite thing at the moment. It helps me not fiddle with detail and I'm doing a Sussex path. And the nice thing about doing paths, so this is the picture I'm doing, um, is that uh, they lead the viewer's eye into the painting. You can do this with figures and composition as well but this actually leads you into the painting which is nice. This is somewhere near Hanukkah in Sussex. It was a lovely uh, sunny day as you can see so nice dappled shade, my favourite. And I'm just going to start by showing you the colour palette I'm going to use. I'm actually painting on quite a smooth board. This is not a canvas and it's not paper. It's actually the back of a picture frame that I have primed so luckily it will fit straight into the picture frame. Um, so all you have to do is go over it uh, several times with uh, gesso or yeah mainly gesso several times and you should sand it which I haven't done unfortunately. Uh, um, uh, this is my palette uh, so you can see what I've got so I'm trying to stick to a reasonably uh, narrow palette so here I've got yellows because this is, I like to use yellows to depict sunshine but I have also got here something called green gold which is very transparent but it's just lovely that is just sunlight through leaves um, and then I've got so I've got yellow uh, primary yellow lemon yellow cadmium yellow hue I've taken to using cadmium hues now even though they're not as nice as actual cadmium but cadmium is terribly poisonous so I'm trying not to put any more in the environment uh, this is yellow ochre, this is phthalo green, which is a lovely deep green, a bit on the blue side, but when you mix it with other colours you get that lovely deep colour to it. Sap green, which is nice and transparent. And then I've got some Elysian crimson. You say, why have you got Elysian crimson in this palette? Well, so I can make purples with the French ultramarine, but also if you mix this with Elysian crimson, you dull it down and it gets a really nice dark oh I just love it anyway um, and then a bit of uh, burnt sienna and a bit of burnt umber let's see how we go and white of course now with this method of painting unless your paints particularly old and claggy you probably won't need any painting medium it does use up a lot of paint and this is quite a large board so I'll be using up a lot of paint um, and which I'm going to put on large blocks, I think, because we're constrained by time. You don't want to be here for two hours watching me paint. And then I'm going to take uh, do the tonking, as promised, uh, just to show you how it works. Tonking is a very useful technique because when you've got too much oil paint on your canvas and you just can't fit any more on, you do the tonking. And do look up Henry Tonks. He was a surgeon who did uh, helped with the plastic surgery in the First World War. Young men who had their faces blown off, and he did portraits of them all. But look him up. He's a fascinating man. Um, and so I will be doing mono prints. Once I've got a lot of paint on here, I will be doing something called well, um, it's actually tonking, but I will be doing it on paper and actually almost treating it like a mono print. And uh, you get some lovely effects with that, particularly on black. Okay, so I'm going to crack on now. This is the camera I use, so it's a little bit in the way, but I'll try and work around it. Um, so I'm going to start with the darks. So with oil paints, uh, the general rule is paint. do your darks first. So I'm going to mix myself up a nice dark. So I've got this colour. Ooh, look at that. Oh, and the palette knife I like. This is the Little Trowel palette knife. It's a T, if you can see... Uh, T15 C Whites. I don't know what other mates call it, but this is the one I use. There are all sorts of other different shapes. As you, what if you watch Bob Ross, he's got all sorts of weird ones. But this is my default. I always, always use this one. So I've got this ugh, lovely dark colour, and I'm just going to put a bit of Elysian Crimson in there to make it slightly less blue. I hope. Can you see how dark that is? Yum. And I might put a little bit of burnt umber in there as well. And I want to establish my darks first. And you notice I've sort of cheated a bit. I put the sky in. I did that yesterday in the hope it would dry. But the trouble with uh, using <coughs> uh, paint quite thickly, it takes a long time to dry. I even mixed in a drying medium with that. And it's still wet. But never mind. Let's hope we can crack on. So I'm going to refer to my image. And I'm going to put the dark passages in. Like, for instance, here. There's lots and lots of dark. So I'm just smoothing it on. It's like icing a cake. So I pick up the paint. It's on the bottom of my palette knife. And I'm just going to smooth it on. And actually that dark comes down there. And I've noticed this board is a bit knobbly. But never mind. 
Um, I should have sanded it down. <coughs> uh, so I'm, so I've used up all that paint, so I'm going to have to make some more. So again, so the uh, dark green and some red mixed together to make this eh, very dark colour, which I wonder what colour that really is. It's a very dark, cool green. So I'm just going to throw a little bit more burnt umber in there to make it slightly less blue, but I want to put those dark passages in. So they're up here, so it is more or less like icing a cake. Um, and over here, and I'm hoping I can work into those dark areas. And then some down here. And I hope to also do some scrapitio for the uh, textures in the foreground. So you don't want to worry about it there, but as we as you come closer, you will find that uh, you can actually scratch into the surface. And I'm painting on white because it gives a nice kind of glow to the canvas, so when you put on paints. I normally do paint on a colour, especially green things, but white, white is alright. So again, I'm trying to put in these very dark areas first. Where's another dark area? Maybe over there, and over here. So I want to get those darks in first. The reason why you paint dark to light with oils is you want, uh, once you've got lighter colours or you've actually got white on your canvas, it's almost impossible to get rid of it. So you want to get your darks on first and then worry about uh, putting lighter areas on afterwards. So I might just take, we got some dark down here and there's a lot of dark up there. I'll just slap that on. Ugh. Slap, slap, slap. Um, ooh, look at that. Yeah, it's like icing a cake, really. Uh, so you can get some really nice shapes uh, here. And then, so that's my very darks established. So then I'm going to actually use sap green, which is this colour. I'm not actually cleaning my palette knife. I, don't, I want it to be not quite as dark and quite green, uh, for instance, in these areas over here. So that's that. And it still looks quite dark, but as soon as I start putting some light on it, hopefully it will start lightening up. So a little bit more sap green over here. You can see sap green is quite transparent, but it before you actually put any opaque colours into it, it is really quite dark. So again, more sap green, and gosh, I'm using up a lot of paint, <laughs> but never mind. Okay, so we've got our dark areas there, just to vary them a bit. And here, and then I've got some dark in the grass here, and I'm just going to use sap green and some shadow in the grass over here and also the grass over here. Ooh. I think I might need some more sap green. Uh, but it's so nice doing this with oils. It, it is a bit of a, uh, a learning curve to use oil paints because they don't dry like acrylics. With acrylics, you put on these very, uh, large slabs. You can paint a palette knife with acrylics, obviously, but uh, once they're dry, they can kind of leave ridges behind, so um, I prefer to use oils, but you, it is a learning curve and generally you have to wander away and wait for bits to dry. Ideally, I would have waited for the uh, sky to dry, but I didn't have the chance. So now I'm going to make a slightly lighter green, I think. So I'm mixing, oops, sap green <coughs> with a bit of yellow. Let's see what happens. I think I'll use that one. This is primary yellow. Woo, that is very yellow. But then it has got a bit more opacity to it. So I'm going to try and start thinking about woo, putting something in here. I think I'm going to need to add some white first. And I do like palette knife painting because you can't, it stops me fiddling and I can fiddle with the best of them. So I think I want a little bit more opacity going on. So now I'm going to start thinking about adding white to some of the areas, but you can see, so it does mix. So you mix the colour on the, uh, on your painting surface. So, and this is going to use up a lot of paint, but let's crack on. So I'm going to dull that down a bit. It's a bit on the yellow side. So I'm adding some yellow ochre to it. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Ooh, it's a funny colour. Let's have a bit more. 
So a bit more sap green. Make it more green. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white. And you'll see how it changes a bit. And then that gives it more opacity. So in fact, so I probably want that to be there. I want that to be yellower in fact. But actually I'll take, I'll put that large area in with this colour and then I will add some yellows on top. And again, smoothing on like icing a cake. And we've got some green down here. Uh, where else would I want it? Oh, up here. That's right, so it can start mixing in with the stuff I've already put there. Now I'm going to add a little bit of green gold to that because I'm finding that colour a bit dull. That's better. And I'm just going to smooth that on. And it's quite nice to have to do this very quickly. This would probably take me, I don't know. Uh, it's quite a quick method of painting because it's quite hard to go back. So I would often do the areas I need, like the background first, and then go back once it's dry so it's not interfering with the paint I then put on. But let's give it a go. And I'm actually cracking there with some yellow see what happens when I actually just put yellow on. Ooh, because I want it to mix with the paint underneath. Ugh. Or do I? Ugh. And sell it to a blind man, as I say. So when it's really lumpy, uh, you would think, yes, a blind man could feel, feel what was going on. So I'm just going to put that on there. And I think I need a bit more yellow maybe green gold um let's get this so i have to mix this up oh that's better so i'm getting some yellower passages here and you see so the trouble is that often you will pick up uh stuff on your palette knife so i'm just going to wipe that away and go in here with some of this some lighter areas here. Oops, that's got some of that phthalo green in it, but never mind. Ooh, that's nice shapes. And you will find the painting actually leads you on. I really like that shape, I must say. Uh, so I'm going to just grab a bit of green gold, a bit of sap maybe, and see what I end up with. So perhaps I could put that tree in there. And again, you can see I'm kind of flattening my strokes. So I'm always generally i mean people do use palette knives in different ways but i like to have put this flatness on there so i'm just going to grab eh, a lighter slightly lighter version of that and see what happens Ooh, that do yes that looks like a hayfield in sunshine let's put a hayfield in sunshine on there Ooh, squish 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 Ooh, nice shapes I like them and then there's some sort of hay going on here. So where it's far away, I want that kind of cooler colour. Yeah. And then down here as well. Oops, I've got some phthalo green and nice thing. You can also scrape it away. Where else do I want that colour? Maybe over here. Why well, haven't put that dark bit in? Let's have a look. We're going in there with green gold so I can actually almost blend the colours on the canvas. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to wipe you. The nice thing about this, you're not using solvent either, so I can just wipe my palette knife and pick up some of this nice green gold, which I think we need over here. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yum, yum, yum. And I need some more darts in there. I'll have to go back to that. That's, ooh, that was a nice colour I mixed. I think that was yellow and green gold. So I can put those in there and actually almost create textures here. Ooh. Ooh. And down here as well, I want something going on down there. I'm going to use up a lot of paint. Right. And over here, so squish, 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 squish. And then I want some areas down here. Maybe with a bit more sap green in there, putting that tree in or whatever it is. And creating almost textures so I can actually manipulate the paint in weird and wonderful ways to create textures of trees. And I want to 
come down here. That's an, ooh, squish, squish, squish. Ooh, that's going to be nice. Ooh, yum, yum, yum. Right, <coughs> I'm going to have a little bit more sap green, which I'm going to lighten a little bit with some yellow ochre. Ah, and then I can put some slightly darker passages in here. Yeah. Yeah. How's that going on? And over here too. So sap green is kind of a more normal colour, so I'm just going to mix that in there. But you can see it's quite dark. So maybe if I pop a bit of yellow in there, let's see what happens. So there we are. So that now that's gone more opaque. And I'm going to put in the more texture in there. You don't want it all the same. I think I might just pick up a few bits of actual yellow, pop those on top, and then that is actually going into not quite as deep shade as that's going on here. Uh, and as I say, you use up a lot of paint. Something lumpy there. In fact, I might have to go and refuel in a minute. But I have some sap green because I want to de differentiate that bit from that bit. And put in some lighter areas here. Now you can see I'm using palette knife in different ways adding different things and a bit more sap green over here and I want something better yeah I want to differentiate the grass from the trees and then I think I want a little bit of yellow ochre going on up here because they're not all the same and I'm going to put a bit of white in it now, so I'm just going to mix some white in with my yellow ochre. Ooh, that is a bit too much, but never mind. Let's see what we got there. Oh, that make a nice colour for this grass over here. So there we go. Oops. And a bit more greeny stuff, the yellowy stuff. That's what I need. A bit more yellowy stuff. Yeah, so a bit of texture going. Oh, that was nice. A bit of texture going on there. <clears throat> um, so I want some darker areas here. So I can actually drag some of the paint I put on earlier. Because now I think I'm going to run out of paint very quickly over there. And I'm having trouble seeing what I've done in this corner. But let's keep going. There we go. Right. Uh, so I'm going to pick up some pure yellow. So this is my cadmium yellow hue. And I want some bit of zing going on, I think. I'll try and get a bit of zing going on. Whoa. Zing, zing, zing. And over here too. And you can see it's actually mixing with the paint underneath. Hmm. And then I think I want... The green gold and the yellow. Let's see what that does. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice zingy green. So that's green, grow, gold, and yellow with a little bit of white knocking around. So I want to come in here. Whoa! Squish, squish, squish. And you can see this is a very free uh, way of painting. And my uh, acrylics palette knife landscape workshop was very popular because people kept sending things that they did with it it just frees you up it frees you up from having to be too photographic I think because you just can't well I suppose some people can but that's not so a bit more yellow going on here I need to lighten that so I'm going to put a little bit of white in there now and it is like so mixing is like spreading butter on toast and applying is like icing a cake Let's come down here. Whoa, that's nice. Hmm. Um, and then we've got some lovely bright greens just here, which I'm, I'm blocking in. I would probably put spend time to do a little bit more detail if I was painting this in a more normal circumstances. But ooh, that's nice. You never know what you're going to discover. So the painting can lead you 
in different places just by the marks you make. So I really like that, but I'm going to drag that down a bit. Ugh. No, I don't like that, but let's put it in there. Try and make sort of the texture of this hedgerow. <coughs> and, and then also we've got some nice green going on here. Oops, that's got picked up some uh, phthalo green. So again, I'm mixing up green gold with some of my yellow to make that really zingy grass colour, which is kind of over here and here. Oop. And again, trying to catch what that road's up to. And in fact, I did paint this as a painting and I have sold it, so I'm quite pleased with that. Um, <clears throat> and I think I had to let it dry before I did the path, but we will persevere on this one and see what happens, really. Ooh, squish, squish, squish. Let's put it on sort of slayers of colour, so I want to lighten that area a little bit. Ooh. Uh, 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 uh. And then there is something happening in there, and I'm having trouble seeing what's going on. But let's make it not quite such a dark, dark shape. Um, hmm. And then I've got some dark areas there, so I'm going to use, <coughs> I think I'm going to use sap green here, which is really quite dark, but I'm going to work into it with lighter colours. Ooh, there we go, that's some nice marks. Hmm, and then maybe a few in here too. Right, and then let's run something dark there. Man, I have almost run out of sap green. That's, oops, the shadow there. Hmm, and over here as well. So that is <laughs> the last of my sap green. But let's use it up, let's see what happens. And you've got this <clears throat> nice path that's really leading you into that landscape. And I've been doing quite a lot of those in lockdown, and I've enjoyed every one actually. It's like almost being there. Right, I have now run out of sap green, so excuse me for a minute while I go and grab some. <clears throat> now the paints I use <clears throat> are actually Winsor & Newton's art Artist Quality, uh, which are really expensive now and just about to get more expensive because they're all made in France after Brexit. <clears throat> but the Georgian series and uh, what's the, is that the De La Roni and the Windsor and Newton? I can't remember what they're called. Uh, they're perfectly fine if you want a set of oil paints for Christmas. Uh, I think you can get a reasonable set for about 20 or 25 pounds. Uh, um, and you could email me if you want to know uh, some of the other things to get. Now, the one thing I always recommend is liquid, which I will use for the glazing and it's also good for helping paint dry. In fact, I probably should use some in here because this is going to take absolutely ages to dry. Uh, <clears throat> so oh, I'm going to pick up some yellow here. Oops, I should probably get rid of that sap green. Ooh, let's have some green, gold and yellow again. Oh, that's a nice colour, isn't it? Yum, yum, yum. So I'm just going in there trying to add those, but I think it needs lightening a bit. So I'm just going to add white to that mixture of yellow and green gold. <clears throat> Over here. It's not too shiny, I hope. Um, uh, whoa, that is maybe a bit much. But again, so I'm trying to create this idea of grass. Oh, in fact, it's picked up that colour underneath. Uh, <clears throat> and you can see that uh, <clears throat> It's good to establish your darks because it'd be really hard to get that dark to be dark again once it had white or any other lighter opaque colours on it. So you've got to get those in first. So this is yellow and green gold again I'm mixing up. As I say, you get through a lot of paint. And I'm going to just add a bit of white to that. <coughs> Which is here, so that's I'm just adding a bit of white to that to get that nice sunlight through leaves colour. So I'm going to go over here, Ooh. over here, Ooh, what's that? Something, <clears throat> uh. right, okay, 
Oh, that's fun. I just love it. <laughs> because it, it takes me away from being really tight and illustrative because you just can't do that with uh, uh, palette knives and you can actually respond to the marks you're making. And I might want to uh, let's have that going down there, over here too. And there's a bit happening here. I'm just going to put that on. Oops, got a bit of the phthalo green. And uh, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> right. Okay. Just looking at what I've done. Um. Yeah, I think you can see it reasonably well, can't you? It's not picking up too much shine from the window. Uh, let's have a bit of sap green mixed into that green gold and yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. I know that's going to cool it down. Let's have some more yellow in there. So again, see, I'm making sure the paint is a reasonably pure colour. And I just want to put on some sort of grassy marks. Over here, oops, no, that's getting a bit messy, and then uh, maybe a bit over here and over here, and this disappears into the distance, and that needs to be lighter again, I think. So, as colors recede from you, they tend to get cooler. So, I just mixed up some white with that uh, sap green mixture, and I'm just going to pop that on there to do this idea of the path receding from view. Hmm. And then again, I want a bit of stuff going on here, probably here, what else? Over here. So I've got all these white spots, but I'm not going to worry too much about them. That is the advantage of painting out of colour, so sometimes you will have just bits of that colour poking through. I'm going to pick up a bit of yellow ochre and mix it into that general colour I had and see what happens. To get some more, it's a kind of brown things happening over here. Maybe not. It needs to be a little browner. Ooh, that's too much. But I'll put some of that in there just to have another colour knocking around. In fact, in, in a painting I did, I actually used some cadmium red. Um, I'm going to mix up a weird... Blah. That's really not working. <coughs> I was hoping to mix up an orange. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's go with that. So get a few other colours going in there. So that's a bit of just Elysium Crimson in yellow. Let's pop some ooh, interest in there. Blech. Right, okay. Just to not make it all the same colour because it is getting a bit dull. The trouble with doing landscapes, they can be green, green and green. But a good way of getting around that is to think or to look at how Monet used colour, because um, he was very good at colour. Uh, oh, now, I'm going to take up some yellow ochre, and just pop it in there. Um, so, I'm going to use uh, white and yellow ochre, so that is not white and yellow ochre, to start thinking about the path. Oops, that's got a bit of green knocking through it, but just a little bit of yellow ochre in that white to have this idea of different coloured mud here. Ooh, a bit of burnt sienna, maybe, uh, <coughs> which is going to go an odd colour. So that's burnt sienna. Ooh, a bit on the pink side, so I'm going to use a bit of yellow ochre in there. Perhaps have the edge, Ooh, more yellow ochre, of this, so it kind of goes ah, like that. So I'm just going to squish that on when necessary. Squish, 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 squish. And it kind of disappears around the corner. And then we've got some of that over here. And ooh, a bit of blonde umber, maybe, to catch. It's kind of the edge where the sort of leaves settle and things. Oh, I think I need a bit more variation in there. So I'm just going in here. OK. 
Okay. And over here. So this is a uh, burnt sienna, <clears throat> which is always nice for leaf litter, as it were. And round the edge here. And over here. Ooh, now I'm just looking at, oops, some of these kind of prongs. Ugh, I do want a bit of that going on. I want to vary it a bit to have a few more other colours going on. Well, that looks right for monoprinting. There's a lot of paint going on there. So I'm just going to clean my palette knife thoroughly just by wiping on some kitchen towel or my trousers, depending which comes first. <clears throat> and I want to mix up a kind of light colour. In fact, Naples yellow would be ideal. And I'm trying to keep to a slightly limited palette to mix up this colour here. And this will be pretty much like icing cake. Look, I've got the dapple shade to deal with. Damn. And I said uh, what I did previously was let that let all this dry and then do the path. But let's see what happens when I crack on here. Ooh, a bit of an odd colour. But I'm getting interesting marks and I'm trying to keep it the way the path is. So actually when you do directional brush strokes that's often good for uh, describing what's really happening. <coughs> so again, palette knife, palette knife. Wish, wash, 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 and so I want that to join up here. Oops, and over here. Wow, this is going to take like forever to dry, but so I want to get that in there. I may not bother with the dapples in the dapple shade because it's going to drive me nuts because it's going to be. Um, wet and I would as I say ah some green gold going on there uh, let it dry in between and it's quite good to have several paintings on the go at the same time and you can always use a brush I was just tempted to use a brush there but I'll try and reframe because I want that nice shape there oops and uh, not so much there but there's a little bit there and kind of squish it around flatten it out give you that idea of that path receding into the distance. Right. Okay, what are we got going on here? Eh, there's some more going on there. And I'm just gonna move this around a little bit on the board, but be careful because what's just happened to me is I've mixed the paint too much and I do want that to be a little bit joined together. I'm trying not to let the uh, spots irritate me too much. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit more burnt sienna, I think, here and there. So I think I want some over here. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Burnt sienna. Uh, ah. Get the white off my brush. With my palette knife. Okay, drag that down. And then clean my palette knife and go back and put some burnt sienna in here just for the sort of edge mulch bit and it makes quite good light within the shadow. The trouble with burnt sienna is it's very thin. I'm thinking about starting my dappled shade now so I'm just putting a bit on to have a bit of light going on there <clears throat> because what I'm going to do is mix up some purple. So I want something going on here. Hmm. Uh, so um, I'm actually going to mix up a purple, um, although I'm probably not going to use it as purple, um, but Monet did quite a lot and it really is very effective rather than just using sort of darkening down your colours. And so here I'm just mixing up a purple with French ultramarine and uh, alizine in crimson. What colour is that I wonder? I'm going to add a bit of white to that to see what's going on. That's still pretty much blue. Let's have a bit more crimson then. There we go. Ah. There we go. And a little bit of white. So once you get white in anything, it's absolutely impossible to get rid of it. But this is ideal for this bit, I think. Because it seems to have this coolness. I'm just squishing it on and it's mixing in with that burnt sienna I put on earlier, or burnt sienna mix rather. 
just want to squish it around a little bit and maybe flatten it out as again like icing a cake and then a little bit more of that so uh, I'm just going to add a bit of white to that purple mix I made yeah Ooh. yes let's do that okay Put that on and you can see as soon as white gets in there it destroys the darkness of it so I'm going to really simplify this dappled shade there and there and I've got a whole bunch going on here squish 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 right and it's such a satisfying way to paint I can't tell you and as I say, it really helps me free up because I found as soon as I revert back to a brush, I get all tight again and it uh, kind of destroys my artwork. So, use more palette knife, Lucy. That's what you should do. Okay, so I'm just coming along here, putting in some shade and shadow. <laughs> Boing, boing. And I find actually painting on a smooth surface, you can get uh, smooth boards, uh, sort of birch ply. Birch ply is good, but you do have to prime it. And I think the rule of thumb is that you have to prime it with gesso, sand it, prime it with gesso, sand it, prime it with gesso, and then you can paint and then sand it uh, and then wipe off all the dust. Uh, <clears throat> and I find it very satisfying with palette knife. with canvas uh, you find your paint kind of sinks into the dimples in the canvas it's, but this the paint sits proudly on the surface and it's really quite fun so I'm just going to smooth that out a bit I'm not going to worry about me white spots too much because I'm conscious of the time I don't know what the time is but we've been cracking on for quite a while and you don't just want to sit here and watch paint dry I'm just having an appraise think oh a little bit more purple I think you can never have too much purple uh, so let's get that and that oh yum and a little bit of white in there because uh, there's a nice kind of cool reflection just there and then this needs a little bit of purple in it I think and I'm conscious of the fact I'm probably going to start fiddling in a minute which I don't want to do Oh, wow, I'm cracked on with that one. I'm just going to fill in, having said, not worrying about the whites, I just want to get the path a bit more resolved in some places. And it occurs to me, if you paint on an unprimed surface, it'll probably dry quicker. I must try that sometime and see what happens. So if you paint oils onto an unprimed surface, what happens is the oil paint is sucked in to the surface and it's like painting with honey within about 10 minutes. Uh, but it might actually be helpful in this situation. Oh, can I be brave and put some dappled shade on? Eek! Oh, yeah, that sort of worked. Um, okay, just cleaning my palette knife, picking up my sort of pale, uh, uh, rather peculiar yellow ochre colour. My path colour, so I'm just going to go in and mix some white in there. And have a bit of a squish! Squish, squish, squish! Oops! i put a little bit of dappled shade in! Eek! Look, that was a bit clunky. Never mind. <laughs> and a little bit more burnt sienna just over here, maybe. Yep. Oh, damn, you see, it's got white in it, and that's annoying. Put some bubble on top. Right, now, as promised, <clears throat> I'm just looking at that. What do I need to do? I think I'll just pick up a lighter yellowy green and pop in here some areas of lighter colour. I don't want it to be too dark and actually this is very dark and there is stuff happening here like there's a tree branch. Oh dear, I can't see what I'm doing. You probably can't see what I'm doing either but look. I'm going to have a bit of a squish so it's not all just one dark area. Ooh, squish, squish, squish. Right. Hmm. And uh, I'm going to put a bit of texture in here so you can actually scratch in. 
refugio, that's called, and actually reveal the surface underneath, which is quite nice. So I can add a bit of texture here just by scratching in. Ooh, maybe I'll have a bit of that going on. Scratch, 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 scratch. Ooh. And over here too. Again, we've got a lot of nice ooh, stuff happening here. And I'm just going to scratch in some foreground. Yeah. And you can really exploit this when you do your mono printing. Now, the classical way of doing mono printing is to do it on glass, or actually paint on glass and then put it on a surface and then work into it. Um, which I think Caroline is doing for you uh, in one of the demonstrations. But, ooh, maybe that's a bit too much. There we go, a bit of texture. Texture, texture, texture. Ooh, now I'm fiddling, leave it alone. Uh, <clears throat> but, I discovered it was a very nice way of, um, well, uh, doing the tonking. And then when you actually do the tonking, uh, you get a nice image afterwards. So I'm going to do some tonking now because there's a lot of paint on here. It will affect the surface of your painting. <clears throat> but on the other hand, you get quite a nice um, image that comes out of it. Uh, and uh, this is not really mono printing, but I just want to show you because you do get some nice effects. So this is black, just black sugar paper. And I'm going to go on here. And you can use this on any oil painting you're doing, even with a brush. And goodness knows I've used it several times. So you're just <clears throat> basically taking one print, a mono print, from your painting. And in an ideal world, this should be the prepared surface because this will turn into chip paper in a minute. Because uh, <clears throat> all the oil will be absorbed into the paper. And you can see, look, it stays there all by itself. So now I'm going to pull it off. Ooh, it's made. Ooh! Oh, yum. Ha ha. Look at that. That's much better. <clears throat> and then you can get, it's almost like a woodcut. Uh, can you see? So it's uh, it's got this nice effect uh, <clears throat> of just picking up where the paint is proud. So that's rather nice. But that has actually improved the painting. <clears throat> you do get this kind of stippling effect here where it's <clears throat> taking the paint off. But that's actually improved at no end. <laughs> um, and I suppose I will do it with white. So here I have a piece of white paper. Um, so obviously there's slightly less paint on here. Oops. And you can, sorry, you can uh, get different effects by, uh, so I could add more paint and then do it again with white. But I'm going to try it with white just to show you what happens. So again, I can just rub this. Um, I suppose proper mono printing is a whole different ball paper. This is how I do it. And as I say, ju I just found this when I was doing some tonking. Ooh. Ooh, that's getting better and better. That's much better. I think it helps that it's on this white surface. Ooh. And I've got a rather uh, <coughs> interesting, weird pattern here. But that's really interesting, isn't it? Ooh. Very nice. And I think that's a pretty low end. But um, I think I will stop there. I might work into that and actually continue on. Uh, because I really like that, actually. I think it helps that it's on this white surface. Uh, and some of the weird marks it's made are interesting. So I might go on with a brush. I don't know. I'm going to let it dry, whatever happens. And that will, uh, will probably take less time now. So that's good. So I've taken off a whole layer of two layers of paint, so that's been very helpful. Um, and that might work, actually. Hmm. I don't like that line there. Oh, you can do finger painting. This is a very, very smooth surface, which I think helps in the um, mono printing. Oh, that almost completely disappeared. Yes, yeah, so I'm very interested in that. <clears throat> so uh, I think I'm going to stop there. And I'll send a picture to Judy of the monoprints, and we'll see how we go.